Good morning. A bit cooler here than the last while and it's strange really that um, we're only a week away since we had the summer solstice and yet it's quite autumnal. Things have developed very quickly because we had so much heat so our blackberries are in flower already and usually we don't see that until August and the same with the honeysuckle it's been blooming and fragrancing the air for the last month and again usually that's kind of July August time but look it's great it's wonderful we've had a fantastic summer so far and at the moment I'm busy preparing for um, a stress and anxiety workshop so I thought I'd share with you as well some of the herbs that you can use to release and reduce stress and anxiety so I just picked some St John's wort it's really good for um, making you feel more positive, making you feel more um, uplifted and bright. It's got all the sunshine in it, you see, that's why people feel so bright. And it can also affect neurotransmitters so that um, you actually get to feel the good ones, the, the dopamine and the serotonin. So it's a wonderful herb for those times when you're just feeling a little bit down and melancholic. But there's lots of other herbs out here as well that we can use. So we've got catnip here. And catnip we would tend to use, well it would be more associated with colds and fevers. But um, if you're feeling mildly depressed, for example, um, or you, you're very restless and you can't sleep because you're unwell, catnip is mildly sedative it's going to help you fall asleep and also feel better about your health so it's going to give you a little bit of a perk up so that you don't f you know obviously the mind plays a huge importance on our physical health as well if we believe we're very sick we will be very sick if you believe you're on the mend you will begin to recover and that's how catnip helps and here's a lovely favourite. Loads of people, everybody loves borage. It's so beautiful. The bees love it. So when you have it in your garden, you know you're doing some good for the, um, the ecosystem as well. But borage is a great, you know, for someone who's feeling really stressed and anxious rather than depressed, borage is one of those herbs to go to because it's a great adrenal support. So, um, if somebody is kind of feeling burned out and completely over their limit, they're completely overwhelmed with life, borage can really help them. So we're using the, the leaves and the flowers. And here, this is for a vein. This is one of the sacred herbs of the Druids. Again, it's an antispasmodic. It's going to help you relax and it's going to improve mood, but particularly it's going to help you to just relax and feel much calmer and more tranquil in yourself. And so over here, we've got chamomile. I'll just move the hyssop. So the chamomile, everybody knows it's so wonderful for babies. It's going to help them, you know, when you've got a restless fretting baby, Chamomile is going to help them to relax and get a good night's sleep, which means you get a good night's sleep, which means you don't get so stressed. Um, for anxiety, for upset tummies because there's, you know, the stress held, chamomile is something to go to. It's a wonderful plant, a wonderful healer in that respect. And so again, you see that our stress and anxiety can man manifest in different ways. So if it manifests in an upset stomach, Chamomile is going to be very helpful. It's also mildly bitter, so again, it's going to improve overall health because it's going to those bitter receptor sites, which are very, very beneficial. So we're using the flower when we're using chamomile, and the best time to pick it is when the flower is like this with the petals dropping to the back. And then something that has been used since time immemorial is lavender. So lavender is not only a relaxant and an antispasmodic and a sedative, it also lifts the spirits in a similar way to St. John's wort. It just makes you feel good. So we can use the plant, we can make a tincture or a tea. Um, the tea is very nice actually. And also the essential oil, you know, 
a little spray of essential oil in water over a pillow or dabbed onto the forehead. So as I was saying that stress and anxiety can manifest in different ways physically. If you get a stress headache, lavender can be really helpful in reducing that tension in the skull and helping all the muscles of the skull to relax so that the headache dissipates. So lavender is something else to put into our arsenal, our toolbox when we're trying to work to reduce stress and anxiety. So I think I better just take some of that because I love to have it in tea and I love it just as a dried flower to use around the house. Because obviously if, you're, if this aroma is around the house all the time, it's going to keep a lid on increasing or escalating stress and anxiety. Oh, it's just lovely. So comforting and soothing. One of the best ways and the most simplest of ways to get the herbs into you when you're feeling a period of stress and anxiety is to just make a tea. You know, people use chamomile tea quite regularly. It's quite popular. You can do the same with lavender. You can do the same with catnip. You can do the same with St. John's wort or borage and the vervain as well. Any herb that you have that is relaxing and antispasmodic and mildly sedative, you can make a tea. And instead of making a tea like you would normally, just as a beverage, cover it and make sure the steam is held inside because of the volatile oils and just let it stand for 15 to 20 minutes and that gives the the water time to extract the constituents that you need to drink then to relieve the stress and anxiety and to nourish the nervous system or to calm it down or to soothe it and um, that's the best and most simplest of ways so give it a try So I have a few other herbs around the garden as well. I've got some lemon balm here, but I'll, I'm going to a larger pot of it to collect some for a tincture. So here's a tub of lemon balm. I've got lemon balm in other places, but it's more visible for you here. So lemon balm is a lovely, lovely, soothing, calming, it's ruled by the, the moon, so it's, a, it's under the element of water, so it's very much to do with your emotions. So if you have something going on in your life and your emotions are getting out of control, you know, and that's causing a lot of stress, lemon balm is very soothing. It's going to calm you down. And again, it's mildly sedative. So it's a beautiful, beautiful restorative herb. It's going to soothe the, the nerves as well. So wherever there's emotional upset, so if, for example, somebody is very ill and they're very stressed and worried about it and um, or somebody looking after somebody, lemon balm is going to just relieve those emotional exaggerations that are no help to anybody. It's when your imagination has gone mad and you're thinking the worst, lemon balm will just bring you back into a sense of balance, very soothing for the emotions. Then, if somebody was very stressed because of a physical pain, we can consider rosemary. So let's have a look over here. 
So I've got rosemary in lots of places as well, but here's a lovely one. Um, it's stopped flowering now. It's very aromatic. It's got so many uh, valuable uses for people, but in terms of depression or in terms of stress and, and you know, when you're worried about things, if you had some kind of nerve pain, so if you had sciatica, for example, or any other physical pain and you're getting stressed and anxious about it, rosemary is something to consider. Rosemary is going to help relieve the pain. It's antispasmodic. It's, um, again, it's very soothing and nourishing to the nervous system. So it's something to consider when you have that type of stress and anxiety. And don't forget, alongside using herbs as allies to deal with stress and anxiety, you can do things like working with your vagus nerve, you can do breathing, you can do meditation. There's no, um, the beauty about holistic healing using herbs, for example, is that you can bring in all these other modalities. So you can do meditation, maybe do some exercise even to um, look at what you're eating. Make sure you're eating foods with B vitamins or take a good B vitamin supplement. And then remember, that you are in the driving seat. Ignore what outside authority figures are saying. Go into yourself and tell yourself that you're grounded and safe and that you can deal with anything because you are your own authority. Nobody else can make you feel in any particular way. So if something external is causing you stress and anxiety, just go into yourself and realize that you are your, your own highest authority. And I think when you f can do that and begin to feel a little bit more empowered or self-empowered, then you can also deal with stress and anxiety in a much stronger position. You're in a stronger position to deal with it. There are other herbs as well that you can use to relieve stress and anxiety. Um, oat straw, which I collect, I haven't, my oats haven't worked this year, but oat straw is very nourishing to the nervous system, to, to the sheath that covers the nerves. So it's very nourishing. It gives you energy. It's going to perk you up. The whole reason people say they're sowing the wild oats is because they just feel so on top of the world. And then, of course, there is California poppy, which is a beautiful, soft, soothing, sedative remedy. Helps you to sleep, stops the mind racing when you're trying to sleep, as does passiflora. Passiflora, if you can grow that for yourself, I have it down in the polytunnel, um, is another very gentle, soothing herb that can help you to sleep. So that at least if you are dealing with stress and anxiety, you can sleep and that is going to help you get through anything. As will valerian root. There's valerian over there, which I forgot to show you, and it's the root that we use, and that will be dug up in autumn, and it will be decocted, or it will be made into a tincture. So if you don't have the things that I've shown you here, there are those others as well, and I'll put all the information in the box below. So do have a look down below. Um, just to refresh and remind yourself of all the options and I'll put down there how to make a cup of herbal tea as well. So everything will be in the box below. Okay, so I better get on with getting ready for this workshop. I've got things to type and things to photocopy. So I will leave you with this and I'll see you next week. Bye bye! I hope you enjoyed today's film. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And have a look at the website, danusirishherbgarden.com, for more information about us and about the herbal medicine courses I offer and the Wise Woman Way training. And if you go to the shop, you can find the books, the weed handbooks and other herbal goodies. And remember, we put a new film out every Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you next week.